So what I'm going to talk about, uh, sustainable financing of open, of open source and inside the view. The objective is, is to understand um, what makes better financing of open source when, when you want it. So first, what will I talk about? First quickly about me and Xwiki, um, trying to explain what, what the objective I am seeing, so the way I approach this problem, um, what usual open source business models are, some problems with these models. I'd like to point out some novel uh, business models uh, that I found out while, while researching uh, this topic. Uh, th there's some interesting approaches that are not, not that usual, but very interesting. What, what we currently do and uh, what maybe the community could do to help this out for this problem. So about me, so I've been running Xwiki for 10 years. Um, uh, so Xwiki is a collaborative platform, uh, uh, open source, LGPL. Um, we, we work in a pretty competitive market. Uh, there's many, many tools in this area. Um, competitors uh, in the propriety world are uh, people like Microsoft and Google, potentially. So uh, it's, not, uh, it's not that simple. Uh, they're very powerful uh, uh, companies. Uh, there's many, many other contenders, propriety and open source. Um, we try to be in innovative. So we're not approaching, we, ha we didn't approach the, this, uh, this market, the market we went in uh, using a Me Too model. That's uh, uh, what we did with the wiki. We, we wanted to bring a, a different also, a different approach to, uh, to collaboration because we, we believe in, in, in this one. Uh, so while other open source tools tend to replicate document management, for example, or, or social networks now, uh, we, we have our, our kind of own approach and this has some, some impacts in, in the way you, you build your open source model. Uh, we are LGPL licensed, everything's open source. Our company did uh, one, is doing one and three million uh, euros revenue uh, in 2014. Uh, so I'm, I'm very passionate about open source for, for two reasons. Uh, first reason is that uh, I, uh, I like a lot the technical innovation in the open source world. The fact that you can openly use what other people do and, and improve it. And, uh, and so, so this, this technical innovation, uh, I, I find it uh, great. And I believe a lot that uh, open source is important for the continuous of the technical innovation as it was said in previous presentations. And uh, I, I also think that openness is actually very important for, for, uh, for equality and for more equality uh, and reduction of inequality in this world. And as uh, the presentation um, uh, from OpenStack uh, mentioned, and I believe a lot in that, and I think it's, it's very important that uh, there is more and more open source code uh, that anybody can use. So what is the objective? So. Um, I, I took the problems, okay, how can you create open source? So create open source code, write open source code, at the same time build a competitive solution, so make that your product is competitive in the market, um, live from it and be a healthy business, so it's not about doing it in your free time or like something that you can do all day long and, and, uh, and also provide a, a, a good living uh, standard, good living standards to, to your employees and uh, something that's sustainable in the long term. Uh, so that, that's the question I, I, I was asking myself. And so what, what do we see? So um, there, there's some usual business model in the open source world. Actually, the, the, these example foundation singular came from Martin Mikos' presentation, a former MySQL uh, CEO. Uh, and so basically you have on one side, so foundations, uh, so multiple companies collaborating on a core, they differentiate with binaries and distribution. So Linux, Android, Eclipse, Drupal are, are examples like that. Um, singular, uh, like one company maintaining that mainly drives the software and differentiates potentially with add-ons. So sometimes double licensing, sometimes open core. Uh, we see service as a business model. You only do service, everything's, uh, everything's open. Um, there's also the take the money and run, uh, which is actually you sell, uh, you sell what you do to investors, you get money, and then you think about uh, the other aspects later. And I think we have seen a lot of these models, some uh, that, uh, with something that comes out of it and some with some, something that doesn't come out of it. And uh, sometimes uh, the models are mixed, so it's a bit, bit of everything. Um, are these models actually sustainable? Like, does it, it, does it create companies that can stay... 
uh, in a stable way, continue producing open source. Well, w uh, what I see is that foundation, it actually works. So we, we see uh, that uh, in, uh, f for the, m the models where, where the foundation has, uh, has been created, it actually works, but we see that it's actually very large project. So it doesn't, it doesn't kind of, doesn't really work for everybody. If you want to be a foundation, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, it happens if your software is huge, everybody loves it. It's, so it happens for Linux, but uh, it's much more complicated uh, if you're a smaller company or a smaller project. Um, uh, for, for Singular, so what we see is that many, many companies use investors. And for me, that causes a significant problem. I will talk about it uh, uh, just after. Uh, then services, uh, when, when you're using the service model, well, the contribution uh, can be quite low. Um, and the product uh, uh, might like driving. So if, you, if, if, if you're with service, you have less margin, and, and if you have less margin, it's, it's complicated to actually fund the R&D. Uh, so um, I see a big issue with the, the business model of investors. Um, the thing is, so, uh, and this is something we lived at, at XWiki. When I, when I started XWiki, I, I, I saw business angels, I saw investors, and, but, but when we discussed with, with these investors, I, I saw that something was wrong in the discussion. Basically, um, the, the, investors, the investor is not interested in the open source model per se. He's interested in making money. That's his problem. And so the thing is, very often and most of the time, he's, he wants more control, he wants more intellectual property, so he's driving the, the, the company towards thinking about, okay, how are you going to make money out of it? And most of the time, it means looking how closing part of it. So using open source as a way to make the company known, to make the product known, but at some point monetizing and keeping a certain level of control which will allow to, uh, to close. And um, the problem with that is that uh, it also means that uh, contributors in reality uh, don't really have control of what will happen in the future, creates a huge uncertainty and so this huge uncertainty hinders contribution. Actually, we, uh, at XWiki, having a company that is using the same name between the project and the, uh, the company makes people see us a bit the same way. They will see, oh, this is not really open source. Well, we believe it is, we do, we, we have a strong commitment on open source, but the fact that we, we have this, uh, the, the same name makes people think that at some, at some point we might want to close or, or we do we might be doing some, clo uh, some closing. A good example is what happened to MySQL, uh, which, uh, which basically uh, once bought by Oracle is closing progressively. Uh, innovation is happening now in the, uh, in the extension and in the core, uh, in the open source core, and not much is happening anymore. And so what we see for this very large project, there, is a for there, there are forks, so MariaDB is one of it, but MariaDB doesn't have the same possibility in terms of financing. And it's more, more difficult and it's much smaller than what MySQL was at some point and many people are looking at projects like Postgres. And so there is a slowdown in the open source innovation. Um, now, uh, what is uh, the fully, o fully open source also has some issues. Um, like what we, what we see uh, is that, uh, well, people like free, uh, free uh, as money. Uh, they, they love it and they even want services free. So we, we, had, we had experiences where people take the software and they, they, uh, they, when something doesn't work, they kind of complain that it doesn't work and they say, and we tell them, yeah, no problem, we can help you out. Uh, we, can, we can send you a guy to help you out, but no, no, they, they would like you to fix the problem for free. Uh, so it, it's, it's, it's problematic uh, that uh, people confuse a lot this uh, free, free uh, and, and free. Uh, services clearly scale less. Uh, you, the margins are, are tougher to, to, to finance R&D and, uh, and it's a difficulty. What we see is that partners, people that work with the software, don't contribute that much or enough. It's difficult to get more contributions. So, for example, XWiki has a company in Germany that, uh, uh, that, has, uh, that is doing services on XWiki, has uh, a, even a cloud platform on XWiki, and uh, it took a lot of time before they started having a person that started contributing. It happens after, uh, after time and progressively, but it takes a lot of time. 
and uh, so we, we get a bit less, uh, less contribution to the software. So it's kind of, it's a prisoner's dilemma, which is a known economic uh, problem, uh, is that, uh, well, everybody uh, uh, has a vest, basically, if you don't contribute and use the software, you're in a better situation, so in the end, potentially, nobody contributes, and you have a less, uh, less, uh, less code. So it's really tougher to be a health, healthy business uh, with, uh, with uh, being fully, fully open source. Um, now, I wanted to talk a bit about um, uh, novel business models. Um, it, it w recently, I stumbled upon how Moodle uh, does it and I find it really interesting. Uh, basically, it's a company in Australia, Moodle HQ, that controls the brand and the distribution of the software. Uh, they certify partners uh, and basically license the brand. So if you want to be a certified Moodle partner uh, to provide services on Moodle, if you want to use the name Moodle like that, uh, you need to be certified and you need to commit to, to give back 10% of your revenue to, uh, to Moodle HQ for R&D. Uh, they have 60 partners uh, around the world and Moodle is a, is a major software in the education industry now. Uh, so this is actually a very interesting model. Actually this 10% is when, I think it was back in 2005, something like that, I tried to do that with a service company. Uh, didn't work at all, like they didn't want to give any money. Uh, it's like, oh no, we don't make a lot of margin on the project, we can't give. 10% is significant for a service company. So it's complicated to set up, but it's actually an interesting model and uh, maybe this is something that uh, we, we, we can put in uh, and, and do uh, uh, once the software is more and more known. Another company that I find the model interesting is uh, Pwik. Uh, so Pwik is a Google Analytics competitor, competitor open source. And so uh, basically the way Pwik operates today is uh, they have actually, they're split between the guys that actually code it and the guy that use the Pwik brand. So Pwik.com is actually another company uh, which, uh, which license the brand and, uh, and sell services and particularly a cloud service uh, where you can have your own Pwik installation online. Uh, but it's two separate companies. So. Uh, the, the R&D team is, uh, is not the same as the, uh, the pwik.com. So it's still, it's the control of the brand that uh, allows the R&D company to get some funding out of the, the business part. And so the, the R&D is actually a French guy in New Zealand, and, um, which hires people. I don't know exactly how many there are. And um, the, the, the services is a company in Poland. Uh, so what did, what did we do over the 10 years? So th the first thing is that uh, we're, we're strongly committing to open source. And whenever we're looking at solutions that mean, uh, okay, let's close something, we, we're, very, uh, we're very reluctant. We're reluctant for two reasons. Uh, we're reluctant uh, for one reason that it reduces distribution. If you're not giving, if you're not providing the best open source product possible, you're actually reducing distribution and, and getting more known and actually getting big is important, particularly in our market, which is a competitive market, as I said, and everybody needs collaboration. So it's actually infinite, uh, the number of customers. So it's actually important to, uh, to, uh, to have the maximum distribution possible and not having the best product possible is an issue. Um, and the second, the second reason uh, is that uh, we feel that it's a trend in the bad direction. If you start closing, uh, well, how, where do you stop actually? So where do you stop and the fact that you, you close what you do? So what we do instead, so we sell services and support, so we're mostly a, a, service, a service business. Uh, but what we do is uh, we, we did one thing and actually worked quite well, is we, we price 50% more uh, for clients, uh, customers that don't have support contracts. Because for us, what is really important is uh, is, is a rep, the, the, the repetition of revenue uh, every year and the support contract is really important and actually also has better margin potentially than, than just development. And so, um, so we, we, uh, we try to encourage people to take support contract. And this, this worked and this is, uh, also raises understanding towards clients because it's a lot about understanding. Clients don't really realize how exactly it works. So they tend to, and when and you have some people, when we talk to them, they, they, it's not a problem for them. They, they could give the money. It's just when they go see the boss, the boss, they, they, they ask, uh, do we have to pay it? And the guy has to say, well, no, we don't have to pay it. So, and then the boss says, oh, but it's not paid. 
because a boss, when he looks at his check, and I'm the same, same guy, huh? when I'm asked about software, buying software for my own company, I have the same problem. It's like, uh, do we really need to pay that? Uh, oh, no, maybe we can do something different. Um, so uh, another thing we do is uh, we believe a lot in the cloud offer, but it's difficult because cloud is very much more for smaller companies today, at least in, in, our, in our field. We, we see it's target more of smaller companies and the competition is very tough in this area. You know, I have a lot of solution, Google is one of them. Um, and uh, so it's, it's uh, more complicated to actually uh, do, do cloud, but I believe a lot for open source that providing your open source software in the cloud is a great business model. Uh, and uh, what we do, we promise reversibility is that people can go out of the service. Um, what we did we do for financing? Uh, so we finance with a margin of services. Uh, so support is actually bringing in the most. Uh, uh, development is bringing, uh, is bringing also significant uh, money. Um, we have also a collaborative research project that has been actually very important for XWiki and um, we went in there a bit uh, more uh, randomly, we, we were brought by other people uh, in, in this project and in, when we look after 10 years, it's, a, it's, a, it's probably as much money as investors. So as what the companies that did investment, uh, so we didn't take any investment, so we're a bootstrap company for 10 years, so we never spent more than what we had, um, except for this research project that provided funding. Um, so I, I encourage uh, young companies to go toward that, mm, uh, that funding in France, in Europe. Uh, there is a, a huge amount of funding in this area and, and, and should be used for open source. Um, we did a lot uh, by clients paying new features. Uh, that, uh, that is significant and uh, uh, that, that works well. Uh, we do discounts, specific discounts, when it's something that is going to be very useful for the product. Um, and uh, contribution, that was actually more true in the beginning. Uh, in terms of ratio, now that we fund ourselves a significant team, uh, you have less contributions, uh, but uh, uh, and because one of the difficulties with when you have an active uh, development team is that contributor, contributors have a difficulty following the rhythm uh, because our guys work every day on the software and uh, contributors are not at all with the same rhythm, so it's a bit different, but we do have a lot of contribution in terms of testing, patches and stuff like that, and so we do a lot of uh, ap ap applying pull requests, but in terms of actual code, uh, it's less, but it's important to understand also that the value of contribution is not, no not as much the number of, co of lines of code, of the fact that it's something you might have not done, and that is actually important, so uh, it's, it contributions are very important, so they're, they're, they do uh, finance the R&D. Um, some models we're looking at. So um, we, one of the things we want to do is uh, uh, we're going to launch what we call XWiki Collaboration Suite. Actually, it's going to be exactly the same product, just branded by, the, the, by XWiki SIS. Currently, we have, a, we have a firewall between XWiki Org and XWiki Com. Although we use the same name, um, in, in, in our operation, the XWiki brand is not owned by the company XWiki SIS. It's actually owned by me personally. And I, I give the right both to XWiki SIS to use it and to, to XWiki Org to use it. The reasons why we use the same name is for simplicity reasons and because we're kind of small. And we're still small and it actually helps us also to create a, a little advantage in the market. But the brand is myself, it's not the company. And so for, for the commitment is that open source will always be allowed to use this brand. Uh, so it's not going to be controlled by the company, it's going to be controlled by me as an individual. Um, the, so we want to package a, a, a version uh, of XWiki SIS, which is going still to be made 100% of open source, but controlled by the company uh, as a way to get more direct contact with uh, prospects and customers. We're thinking, we're looking at app store monetization, so uh, one of the things uh, we're wondering is, okay, how far do, do we need to go into making everything easily installable that we have as open source? versus uh, XWiki SIS has a role to monetize w the packaging it's doing on the code. That's a bit more the Red Hat model. You have Fedora on one side. Red Hat is still 100% open source, but you can't get it that easily. You have to go to CentOS now to get it. You can't get it from Red Hat that easily. So we're looking into that. Uh, at this point, I think the first step we're going to take in this direction is App Store monetization, which is, 
okay, you want an app store with apps that we validate, you, you kind of have to be a customer to get access to that. Um, we're interested in the Moodle model uh, as, a, as a way to, uh, to have better relationship and with partners that partners and service companies uh, have uh, doing, uh, are, are, are bringing more to the R&D of the product. Um, tougher license, so tougher license, the, the issue is a, is a bit about, uh, okay, now you have a lot of people that can use the software, but uh, basically, uh, um, well, if, if, if their plan is to make money for it, we want them to contribute. So there's kind of a paradox. It's, it's really hard to say what we would like to do, uh, and that's kind of the, it's like, okay, no problem that you use the software, uh, that you make money out of it, but contribute, you know, like participate. And the thing is, there is no real license, there is no real system that allows you to kind of make this difference. Uh, so tougher license something we think about, crowdfunding is something we think about. One of the challenges is competing, competition from companies that are not contributing. It's, it's tough, for example, we had m multiple cases where, where, uh, where customers uh, had service companies providing XWiki services and us providing XWiki service and not necessarily valuing the fact as much that we, we do contribute, they don't. Uh, and then it's uh, a race to the, the cheapest offer, which is a problem to finance the R&D. And the other challenge is maximum distribution versus monetization. If you, if you use more mechanism uh, anyway to, to close uh, or to try to find ways to finance more, uh, clearly, you will reduce distribution, and distribution is uh, really, really important. Um, now, what could the community do to help out? Like, what could, could happen in the community? It's the last slide, uh, Cedric. <laughs> so what can we do uh, to, uh, to, to make things better? Well, the thing is, from my point of view, the first thing, customers are also responsible. They need to look into more uh, how the R&D of open source projects are financed. And when they look too much, at the cheapest offer, they're not doing that. Uh, so they need to look into balancing uh, the two aspects. Um, we, we need more collaboration with, with between companies to fund R&D. So if companies are, are, are creating a business around open source, they need also to start contributing more. Uh, and, and so what can we do here? Maybe we can uh, we can have ways to, to, to show the companies that contribute, to show more the companies that contribute versus the one that actually just using the software and not contributing. So labels uh, uh, and certifications or things like that because you, we have a, there is a difficulty which is uh, this competition between companies that don't contribute and companies that do contribute. Uh, so. On the other side, we also need a commitment to open source from singular projects. Where, when a company is, is controlling the, the project much more, uh, well, what I would like to see is that they actually commit to open source, uh, commit to a, a majority level of open source. So, for example, one of the problems I see is okay, is, can we consider that Oracle is still doing open source with MySQL? Uh, may, maybe not, and this has to do with the amount of R&D uh, that they direct towards the proprietary offer on top of MySQL, and the amount of R&D they, they, they direct towards the, um, the open source software. And this is not information that is actually available, this is not information that people can judge when they make choices. From my point of view, when a company has shifted a uh, significant amount of its R&D towards the propriety offer, it's not an open source company anymore, even though it's using this of open source. Everybody's op using open source now anyway. Uh, all propriety companies are using open source. Um, and so maybe more projects using Moodle's model. Uh, that, that, and that model could, uh, could become also an interesting one. That's it, and if there is any questions.